الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. So as we continue with our topic, أفات اللسان, some of the dangers of the tongue. We cover the first one, which is الكلام فيما لا يعني. Is speaking about things that have no concern or have nothing to do with you. And we come to the second of these dangers of the tongue, which is known as al-jidal, which is argumentation and debate. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said, "Abghadu rijali ila Allahi jalla wa ala aladul khasm, rawahul Bukhari." That the most hated person to Allah subhanahu wa taala is someone who is belligerent and excessively argumentative. Someone who loves to argue all the time. Especially the Arabs, they love to argue and debate about every little thing. Every little thing. And this is something that, although some people get pleasure out of and get validation from, this is something that makes you hate it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in another hadith that he could promise a, a mansion in paradise for the one who leaves off argumentation and debate with in kana muhiqqan, even if he's right. Even if he's right, I can guarantee you a mansion in the middle of paradise. Fi rabd al-jannah. In the top part of paradise, but not the uppermost part, but upper part of paradise. For the one who can leave off man tarak al-jidal wa in kana muhiqqan. He leaves off argumentation and debate, even if they're right avoids arguing and debating about issues. And it's a difference, you know, when you're arguing about something that you're arguing for haq, you're arguing for something that is truthful and right. But when there's a difference of opinion in the issue and the possibility remains that both of you could be right in the issue based upon the delil that you have, then there's no need to argue and debate. And you'll find many people trying to convince other people to take their position that is not what arguing and debating is for. You can't force someone to take your opinion. You can't force someone to impose your opinions on other people. If this is what you believe, this is what you believe. But you can't make people believe like you believe. It doesn't work like that. The number three from the dangers of the tongue, or uh, before that, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he said, من جعل دينه عرضا للخصومات كان أكثر تنقل. He said that whoever makes his religion a target for argumentation and debate, then he will constantly find himself transitioning from one position to another. Always, y'all, and every time you debate, your dean is up for the challenge. And every time you find yourself in an argument or a debate about something, your dean is always the target. And you find yourself transitioning from one position to the next, from the next, you have no stability in your deen. Why? Because every time someone argues with you, every time they conquer you in a debate, you find yourself inclining towards their position. And if that's the case, you will find yourself inclining towards everyone's position who conquers you in a debate. Therefore, you have no stability in your deen. Therefore, you always find yourself transitioning from one thing to another. One of the son of um, as they were very, you know, very stern with the people of innovation and debating with them. Today we get on the internet, a Muslim just took shahada six months ago, he's on the internet debating with Christians and Jews about Islam. Ayuba Sakhtiyani, one of the scholars of the past, he was coming out of the masjid. Uh, I'm sorry, Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah ta'ala. <coughs> one of the people of innovation said to him, ta'ala nukhasim, come, let's debate. Hassan al-Basri, he said, Amma ana faqad absartu dini, fa in faqadta deenak faltamishu. He said, as for me, I know my religion. If you lost yours, then go find it. I don't have to debate with you about religion. I'm, I'm clear about what I'm upon. I'm clear about my religion. If you are, you know, unsure about where your religion is, then go find it. And this should be, you know, our attitude and not debating in the manner where we find our religion being the target of transition. Number four, or number three from the dangers of the tongue, al-fuhsh wa sab 
is using insulting language, using foul language. This is not the behavior of the believer. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْفُحْشِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لَا يُحِبُّ الْفُحْشِ وَلَا تَفَحْحُشِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I caution you against being imprudent and using foul language. For indeed, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does not love fuhsh, he does not like indecency in speech and foul language. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لَيْسَ الْمُؤْمِنْ بِالطَّعَانِ وَلَا لَعَانْ وَلَا فَاحِشْ وَلَا بَذِي يعني بذي الكلام. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the believer is not ta'an. He's not the type of person to insult people. He's not insulting. Wala la'an, he's not, he doesn't curse. And when I say curse, I don't mean profanity. I mean, may Allah curse you. This, this is not something that you find the believer doing. That's not from his qualities. He's not ta'an, he doesn't insult people. Wala la'an, and he doesn't curse people. Wala fahish, and he doesn't use foul language. And that is the delil for not using profanity or badi al kalam or using the, the language of the people of the street. That is not the, the characteristic of the believer. There's only one occasion where the Prophet ﷺ, throughout his whole mission, ever used a word from the people that or the people of the street use. And that was when Ma'iz ibn Malik came to him and he said, O Messenger of Allah, inni zinait. I committed zina, I committed adultery. Fatahirni, so purify me. The Prophet ﷺ told him, Idijit, go back. Go seek Allah's forgiveness and turn to Allah in repentance. The man came back four days in a row until the Prophet ﷺ saw his insistence. He said to the man, Perhaps, Perhaps you kissed her. Or you touched her. The man said to the Prophet ﷺ, No. I fornicated with her. I committed adultery with her. The Prophet ﷺ asked him, Aniktaha? Anik? which is the word that we would use for, you know, um, relations. But it is a term that to the Arabs was something that was a, a very lowly word. Like if we were to say, did you have sex with her? And that is because the Prophet Sallallahu he wanted yastathbit. He wanted to make sure that the individual knew what he was saying. The scholars, they say that this is the only time that the Prophet Sallallahu throughout his whole mission ever used a word that was similar to the word of the people of the street. He didn't talk like that. That wasn't his kalam. Even though that was something that was prevalent amongst the laymen of the people. But as a believer, our kalam should be different. Our speech should be different. And it should, be, it should reflect the high moral standards or character that we project in our behavior. So the Prophet wasallam, he said that the believer is not ta'an. He's not insulting. Wala la'an. He doesn't curse. Wala fahish. He's not imprudent. And he doesn't use the language of the people of the street. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al-Jannah haramun ala kulli fahishan. That Jannah is haram for every imprudent individual. Person just disrespectful. And you think about today, even Muslims, even women who wear niqab and wear jilbab, you listen to them when they get angry. You want to see a person's true character? Make them angry and watch how they act. Everybody is good when they're good. Everybody's going to act, you know, everybody's going to act of, of good character so as long as everything is good. As one of the Salaf said, do you want to see a person's true character? Make them angry and see what happens. Number four from the uh, dangers of the tongue is al mizah, yani kathratul mizah, is joking, excessively joking all the time. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to joke. This wasn't something that, you know, as you find many Muslims, they're very stonewallish. You know, when you see them, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, mashallah, brother, you know, no character whatsoever. No charisma, doesn't, doesn't know how to have good character. And the Prophet Sallallahu he used to joke with his companions all the time. But it wasn't something that he made a habit out of. فَإِنَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ كَانَ يَمْزَحْ وَلَا يَقُولُ إِلَّا حَقَّهُ وَإِنَّهُ فَإِنَّهُ قَالَ لِلْعَجُوزِ مَرَّةٍ مِّنَ الْمَرَّاتِ إِنَّهُ لَا يَدْخُلْ الْجَنَّةِ الْعَجُوزِ فبكت الْعَجُوزِ ثُمَّ تَلَى قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّا أَنْشَأْنَاهُنَّ إِنْشَاءَ فَجَعَلْنَاهُنَّ أَبَكَارًا 
أربا أترابا لأصحاب اليمين The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he used to joke with his companions He said to an older lady one day joking with her He said لا يدخل الجنة العجوز Old women will not enter into paradise So the woman started to cry And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he recited a verse where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says that indeed we will change their bodies into new bodies and we will make them abkara, we will make them virgins again. Meaning, old women will not enter into paradise, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before he allows us to enter into paradise, the women and specifically, he will give them their virginity back and he will bring them back to a young age. So no old woman will enter into paradise. So although it was a joke, it was true. Because this is the condition of joking, that even when you joke, it should be haq, it should be true. And as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that no one should joke to make people laugh and make it a lie. No one should lie jokingly to make people laugh. Because although you make people laugh, you anger Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So although you, ang you earn the pleasure of the people, you earn the anger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But he joked with his companions. He said to the old woman that old women will not enter into paradise. When she started crying, thinking that he was literally saying old women will not enter paradise, he clarified using an ayat from the Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he will change their bodies into new bodies before we enter into paradise. Some of the scholars say that we will be brought back to a, a, the ripe old age of 24. Some say 26, some say 33, some say 30. Nonetheless, we will not go into paradise as old people, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us young again. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the women, he will restore their virginity back to them before they enter into paradise. La ilaha illallah. But it shows you that even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam joked with his companions. Number five, from the afat al lisan from the dangers of the tongue, as sukhri or making fun of people. And this is something that we should stay away from as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawm. O you who believe, let not one group from amongst you mock another group. Asa ay yakunu khayran minhu. That perhaps they may be better than you. The people that you mock and the people that you make fun of. They may be better than you. And not the women. And although when Allah says, Oh you who believe, don't mock one another, don't make fun of one another. That included the women. But then he explicitly, specifically addressed the women because this is something that they do. Oh look at her hijab. Oh look at her shoes. Oh look at her pocketbook. Oh look at this. She, this, she has all of these kids. She has all of these children. Look at the van that she drives. Oh, look at her hair. This is something that is specific to women. Don't mock one another because the women that you mock may be better than you. And so this is something that we should stay away from, making fun or making mockery of people. And not to defame one another and not to do it in each other's faces or behind their backs. Another danger of the tongue and we'll start and we'll make this the last one for today inshallah ta'ala is sirr is to expose people's secrets this is a dangerous of danger of the tongue that if someone tells you something in private and then you take it back and you go and you expose it to everyone else qala umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu idha takallama ar-rajul akhahu thumma tawalla anhu fa huwa amana wa in lam yastaq minhu umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he said that if your brother says something to you in private and then he turns around and he walks away from the conversation then that conversation is in a amana it's a trust even if he doesn't say to you don't tell anyone even if he doesn't say don't tell anyone or this is this is between me and you I don't have to say that the fact that I pulled you to the side and I told you in private is an indication that I didn't want everybody to know about it but if I tell you something in secret and then I say, this is between me and you, don't tell anyone, that even further emphasizes, أَكَّدَ Ali. He, he emphasized, don't tell anyone. And it will say, yeah, I won't say anyone. Of course, you know, I don't talk to people like that. And then lo and behold, tomorrow, everybody, the whole dunya knows. Because we went and told everybody. And it will go and say to someone, hey, guess what such and such just told me, but this is between me and you, right? Don't tell anybody. But he just told you, don't say anything to anybody. And then we go and we tell it and we expose it. And this is sinful. This is a sin to go and expose something that someone told you not to expose. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, and I'll end with this, 
إن من الشر الناس منزلة عند الله يوم القيامة الرجل يفضي إلى مرأته وتفضي إليه ثم ينشر سرها. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said the worst people in the sight of Allah يوم القيامة is a man who was intimate with his wife and a woman who was intimate with her husband and then he goes and he spreads her secrets. He goes and he spreads her secrets. And you'll find this happens when couples divorce. When couples divorce, they figure, I'm going to hurt you like you hurt me, so I'm going to get on the internet and I'm going to tell people about you. Secret things that happen in the home between husband and wife and you go and you expose it to the world. And even worse than that, sometimes pictures. Pictures that may have been taken in intimate moments or whatever the case may be. I don't judge, it's not, that's, not my, you know, that's not my place. However, if people had pictures, they will go and they will expose these pictures on the internet to the whole world. And these were things that were done in the privacy of your own home, in the intimacy of your own relationship, and you take it and you expose it to other people, which is a characteristic of the hypocrite. The Prophet وسلم, said, Arba'atun. من 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 وجد من من وجد فيه كان منافقا خالصا. There are four qualities. Whoever finds these four qualities in himself, then he is an absolute hypocrite. And this doesn't mean hypocrisy in your faith. This means hypocrisy in your deeds. نفاق العملي لا نفاق الاعتقادي. This is there's two types of hypocrisy. There's the hypocrisy in your belief, which is makes you a disbeliever, makes you a kafir. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِنَّ مِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُونَ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّ بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ There are those from amongst us who say that they believe in Allah on the last day, but they are not believers. So the hypocrite in belief is actually a disbeliever. However, the, the nifaq that the Prophet ﷺ is referring to in this hadith is nifaq al-amali, is the hypocrisy in your deeds. You are a hypocrite as it relates to your deeds, your actions. Four. Whoever finds these four qualities in himself is an absolute hypocrite. And whoever finds one of these qualities in himself, then he has a characteristic or a trait of hypocrisy until he leaves it off. And one of those characteristics, that when he is entrusted with something, he proves untrustworthy. I entrust you with some kalam between you and me. I said this is between, and you prove untrustworthy because you go and you spread it to other people. هذا وصل الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وياكم.